What do you need for a home birth? Well, a few things. So today I'm sharing how I'm preparing for my upcoming home birth. Hello friends and welcome back to Veggie Manifique, your go-to for holistic wellness and a healthy vegan lifestyle as well as natural mama-ing, evidently. If you are new here, I am so glad to have you. My name's Anne. I'm a health coach, a performer, and expectant mama. So today I'm going to be sharing how I am preparing for this momentous occasion, birth, and specifically a home birth. Now I don't want anyone considering a home birth to get overwhelmed, right? There are people free birthing at home with a couple towels. Like you don't need much. That being said, if you're one of those people that like to be as prepared as possible, like I am, then there are some products that are good to have on hand. So I'm going to break down this video into four parts of preparation. You have the body prep supplies, you have baby body supplies, setting the scene products, and the midwifeian products that you need to have on hand. Now before we begin, I just wanted to mention that all of my body care products as well as those for baby and some of the products that I'll be using to set the scene are from the Dutch Health Store. Surprise, surprise, you guys know I love the Dutch Health Store. It is a small company in the Netherlands owned by a delightful woman named Wilma and I just love her for providing the world with a curated, aggregated treasure trove of products that you can trust and that are super, super pure. I'm so, so so picky. And I always pick Dutch Health Store products because they are just the best. So when you purchase from the Dutch Health Store, obviously you're supporting this lovely woman Wilma and her small business, as well as when you use my links, you are supporting my channel. So I thank you in advance if you should choose to do so. So let's start with body prep. So the first one is pretty funny and it's going to be the first time and maybe only time that you'll hear me say the word Yoni, but let's just get it over with. So this is the Petal Primer Yoni Serum from Living Libations that I got from the Dutch Health Store. And this little oil is meant to, uh, I think they say prime the petals, but no one says it better than the copy of Living Libations, so I'm just going to read that to you. Prime your petals and tone the tissues of your lady star with our Petal Primer Yoni Serum. This organic elixir may be enjoyed daily or weekly to tone and strengthen yoni tissue and during pregnancy to prepare body and spirit for the great passage of birth. This pleasant preparatory massage blend steadies the delicate petals of the perineal area as they ready themselves for their full bloom. So the idea is this, we are priming our petals. Voila. You just, you know, put it there and you hope for the best. Of course, if you're interested in these products, I will link all of them below. So, you know, my midwife is not entirely like set on perineal massage necessarily, but I'm just kind of going for broke here and I'm just gonna try everything and see how it goes. <laughs> now, obviously other body prep activities are exercise and stretching and all these kinds of delightful birth fit preparations, which I talked more about in my pregnancy Q&A video, so I will link that. Next up, we're going to talk about baby body prep supplies. So will I be using Johnson & Johnson's baby oil on my baby? No. I will be using this baby oil from Atlantic Aromatics. It is the purest, purest oil I've ever seen. It's called Chamomile and Calendula. And Atlantic Aromatics is a small company in Ireland and they use a bunch of organic oils. Now this is to be used with baby 12 weeks onward, right? So not right away, but it's it's so pure, you know, like it, it smells like flowers and the earth as opposed to fake chemical bizarros. So this is the oil that I will be using when baby comes. So next up is this delightful soap. It's from a company, I'm gonna try to pronounce it called Helemal Shea. It's a Dutch company and this is the baby and kids body and shampoo bar. Now, I won't be bathing my baby too sweet because obviously you wanna wait a little bit and you know, kinda do like some sponge bathian things but when baby is ready for a bath 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 I have the cleanest purest soap I am so excited about this I mean is that is that not the coolest hippiest soap you've ever seen 
I wish you could smell it, I really do. It's so pure. It doesn't really smell like much, which I love. I love that, because I don't want to like bombard my baby with all sorts of bizarre fragrances, right? Like, it just doesn't seem right. Now this is a Dutch brand that actually Wilma of the Dutch Health Store introduced me to, being Dutch. <laughs> and she was like, you're gonna love it. And I do, I mean, I haven't used this particular soap yet, but I love every idea about it as well as the packaging, it's so cute. So, so cute. So I'm really excited that I will have this on hand for when baby needs a bath. So next up, we're gonna talk about setting the scene. So setting the scene is super important because when you're having a home birth, well, the beauty of having a home birth is actually that you can set the scene exactly how you want it. So you can create the cocoony haven of your dreams for your optimal birthing experience. That's the beauty of doing it at home. And so here are some of the products I'm going to be using to set that lovely, calming, soothing, birthing cocoon thing. So first off, I'm really into ambiance as well as sweet smelling environments. So one of the things I love in general and will definitely be using during my birth is diffusing essential oils. That's something I do, I try to do on a daily basis in our home just to kind of like bathe in the beautiful sweet smelling air. But especially when I'm in labor, I'm going to want the power of essential oils diffusing for relaxing purposes as well as, well, a lot of the properties. So let me tell you. So here are two of the oils that I'll be using that I got from the Dutch Health Store. Of course, this is Living Libations Blood Orange. Now let's talk about Blood Orange Essential Oil. So first off, Blood Orange Essential Oil is super important because you know, it smells so delicious, but it's also a mood lifter. And I think, well, when I'm in labor, I definitely uh, wanna lift my mood. I mean, this just smells like fresh squeezed orange juice, which is just the best. Next up, I'm going to be using the Atlantic Aromatics German Chamomile Oil. So this is organic. This is, again, from this small company in Ireland. And let me just tell you about this oil. There's a bevy of wonderful properties for this essential oil, but I just wanna say one thing. I'm out of breath. But I just wanna say one thing. This is not an oil to use during pregnancy because it can actually cause you to go into early labor, according to my research. So this is really an oil to use like at labor and not before because it can, you know, get you going into labor prematurely. Voila, you understand. That being said, this essential oil packs a super beneficial punch. It has a lot of properties that actually are supposed to calm cramping, like menstrual cramping. So I figure, well, if it calms menstrual cramping, it probably has a positive effect on surges or contractions. Of course, it's also known to relieve symptoms of stress and anxiety, which also sounds like a really good idea. So I think that diffusing this oil is going to be very calming for my nerves and help me to relax during this epic moment. So I will link a study below, but a lot of mamas these days are using essential oils at the time of their delivery to, to glorious results. So I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited to diffuse these, these oils as well as probably, you know, peppermint and eucalyptus and lavender, of course, and all those go-to faves that I use on the daily, I will be using at the birth. Next up to set the scene, certainly you wanna create a playlist or two or three. And that's what I'm going to do. I need to do that. I haven't done it yet, but I will be creating some playlists that I can ask my husband to put on, depending on how I feel. Cause I don't wanna do just one playlist because what if I do one playlist and then when I'm in labor, I'm like, no, I can't, I can't handle that kind of music right now. So I think I'm gonna maybe create like three different ones, like a hippie, earthy kind of meditation-y one. And then maybe like a jazz kind of harp one. And then maybe one that has like, I don't know, like African drumming or like dancing or something because I'm not really sure how I'm gonna feel. So voila, I, I need to create those playlists, but that is something I'm going to do to prepare to set the scene for the birth. So another thing I'm going to keep on hand for setting the scene slash during labor is this amazing lavender water, organic lavender water from Atlantic Aromatics. This is a product that I use every morning on my face to wake up. It just feels so good to spritz like a cold water on your face. And so I figure, well, during labor, I'll probably want something like cool and spritzy on my face, right? Uh, maybe, we'll see. I have never been in labor before, but it sounds like a good thing to have on hand. And lavender is of course very soothing and very calming. I love it. So next up is the birthing pool. So my midwife recommended we get this pool called La Bassine, which is a birth pool that is for birth, right? As opposed to just like a blow up pool. And it's a very affordable pool considering. And it's apparently a lot deeper than a lot of other pools because I'm tall and my midwife 
wife's aware of that, hence why I, you know, I'm not showing as much. My torso is of epic proportions, so she wanted to make sure I got a deep one. So this is La Bassine Pool, and I will insert some B-roll once we get it in the mail, which should be next week. Okay, we got it in the mail. There's some things like, I don't know what this is for exactly. Submersible water pump. And there it is, La Bassine. Strong and spacious. Combines style, comfort, and practicality. Eco-friendly vinyl. Amazing. All right, we're all set, guys. Next up to set the scene, I'm going to be using candles, of course, a lot of mammals, most mammals, go into the dark kind of cavey areas to give birth. And so I reckon that I will want things to be kind of dark and calming and candles sound like they would really support that kind of environment. So I will get those ready and we'll see how I feel about it. I'll probably have a few on hand and then I'll just ask my husband to get those pop in to create the, the atmosphere. Like we have a whole list of things that we want to make sure that we have ready for the birth so that we're prepared. So the next thing to like set the scene or at least have on hand are combs. So combs have been coming up a lot in my home birth research. It's it's interesting. Apparently you hold combs with the like tines facing your palm and then you squeeze them. The idea is that the tines hit a pressure point in your hand and that somewhat painful sensation of ramming combs into your palms registers a sort of like pain that goes to your brain and then kind of diverts the attention from your surges, rendering the birthing sensations more manageable. We'll see. I've got the combs. Just really quickly, before I share all the midwife supplies, I would love to invite you to click the subscribe button if you're not subscribed already. If you're enjoying this content, it just takes a second to click the red button, and of course it supports my channel a lot, and if you click the notification bell, you will be notified of future content. Of course, what this does as my channel grows is it means that YouTube will suggest my content to other people who might enjoy it, and helps my channel a lot to grow and to reach those who are looking for this kind of content. So I thank you in advance for joining the Vigi Mini club here on YouTube and for subscribing and clicking the like button if you feel so behooved. And now back to birth prep. So next up is supplies for my birthing team, my midwife and my doula. So I also have a big list of things that I need to get to prepare for the home birth. And let's go to Rite Aid and to the thrift shop to get some of those things. Okay, I just got to Savers, which is one of my favorite thrift shops around here. baskets. I was looking for a basket for the nursery we make over, make over, redo. However, they didn't have the right ones, but we did get a bunch of towels and a bowl for the placenta. <laughs> so we're now going to go to Rite Aid to get the rest of the stuff on my midwife's list. So let's do it. All right, here we are. We got about a million things to get on this list. Let's do this. We were 
very successful. There's a couple things I need to clarify. You like those AC units and uh, baby gates back there? Our friends gave us those and we haven't brought them in yet. But anyway, so we got most of everything. So there's a couple things I need to clarify with my midwife as to what they are and how I can get them. But hey, we are almost fully checked off on the list. Okay, let's talk about all the supplies that I now have. This is my midwife's list. In theory, I have everything. It's a few days later, obviously. It took me a while. So I'm now the proud owner of Depends diapers. I never thought I'd say that, but apparently it's a thing. You need to have these kind of adult diapers post-birth. Voila. <laughs> so I have those. And then this is our placenta bowl with some plastic bags for some reason. And then I have a bin here so that when my midwife comes, when I'm, you know, in labor, everything is contained. So we've got receiving blankets. A friend of mine has four kids and she's done. And so she gave me a bunch of old blankets. And so I can use these as receiving blankets. And then towels. That's another thing that my midwife requested that I have on hand. So as you know, I got these at the thrift shop. I washed them well and chose all the ones that smelled the nicest. <laughs> So we have four towels here, just to illustrate with one here. And then she asked for two paper towels of a specific brand for some reason. I trust her. So we've got two paper towels, voila. And then we have overnight extra heavy maxi pads. Again, this is truly exciting conversation, but apparently it's a thing you need after birth. Truth comes out. And then she said a heating pad or a hot water bottle. So we have a hot water bottle in case I need to be warmed up. We have a few odds and ends and I'm gonna talk about them. So she asked for a flashlight, which she said she doesn't really use that often, but it's like if you need to, you know, see in there. So we've got one. And as you know, I've got my combs, two garbage bags, and some hydrogen peroxide. Again, this is this is stuff that my midwife suggested, so I'm sure she knows what to do with it. I'm just providing it for her. And then this is a shower curtain. So there's a method with the shower curtain and or a plastic bed sheet in that you put clean linens, clean sheets on your bed. Then you put a shower curtain or a plastic bedspread. And then on top of that, you put another set of sheets that you don't necessarily mind getting birthy if that's where you choose to birth. I'm planning on birthing in a pool, but it's just there, you know, in case you just to pr protect your bed because birth is apparently messy. Voila, the truth of it all. Okay, and then obviously I have a little outfit for baby when he comes. It's a little jammy set, so footy pajamas, which are super cute. Pajamas, pajamas with elephants on them. I got it from some friends of mine and it's organic cotton. Super cute. I will fold this later, Marie Kondo. And then she said to have a few hats. So I have a few hats from a friend of mine and they are ready to go for baby's head. And then I have one disposable diaper in a newborn size. So we are cloth diapering and we're also going to be doing elimination communication, EC. However, right away I figured we might need one of these and the reason why we have a disposable is because of meconium. And I didn't know about meconium until <laughs> very recently. And it's basically like tar that comes out of your baby instead of poo, essentially. And you don't really want to get that all over your cloth diapers. So, voila. We have a couple of the seventh generation super natural, you know, disposable diapers. They're still disposable. I'm not a big fan of disposable diapers, but we have a few just for those beginning days when they're not really pooing out real poo, they're pooing out. <laughs> Apparently it's like tar, I don't know. Anyway, okay, so this is our stuff. Plus, we have these under pads. Again, protective absorbency <laughs> for the ins and outs of home birth. So now let's talk about my midwife's box. So next up is supplies for my birthing team, my midwife and my doula. So this is the birth kit that my midwife had me buy. That is all of the midwife paraphernalia that she will need during the birth. So let's take a look at it. All right guys, now we get to do the most unusual of unboxings. <laughs> So this is from Birth With Love, which is a company that sells things for home births and also they have lists for midwives. So my midwife has a list of things she needs on this website. So I ordered her box, but we're gonna unbox it. 
Now, this is stuff that I don't need to like mess with at all. This is just stuff for her, but I thought it might be interesting to take a look at it with you. So inside, we have a bunch of stuff. I don't even know what it is, you know? Perineal cold pack. Ideal for postpartum perineal care. And a little measuring device. We have some adult diapers. We have some surgical hand gloves. Woven gauze sponge. Yeah. Um, some sort of freebie. Probiotics for mama. Ooh, this is good. This is one of those squirter bottles. You need one of these. Because <laughs> apparently down there you can't really wipe after you go to the bathroom, so you have one of these. A lot of like medical-y kind of stuff, which honestly I don't really want to mess with too much. Oh, these are, these are more pads. These are more like protective pads for underneath after you've given birth. And this is a big bin of more pads. Lots of pads. Okay, so this is her box, which again um, is all the midwifey and things. I kind of want to keep it intact, to be honest, because I don't want to like lose something that she might need, but this is the esoteric midwife paraphernalia, and I'm going to keep it in this box so that she has exactly what she needs, and every midwife is different, you know? That's why they have different lists for different midwives, like some midwives are going to have a few different things that they deem necessary. It just depends on whom you're working with. Okay, voila. So we are going to keep that all intact for her. So next up, of course, we need to have some snacks on hand. In my aunt or in my aunt, I like snacks. That being said, we'll see how hungry I am during birth. My midwife assures me that like most of her laboring mamas are not really into food, but I'm never not into food. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. I'm curious to see. Of course, we want to have food on hand if I'm hungry, but also my husband and my birth team. So my doula and my midwife, we don't know how long they'll be here and we need to feed them. So of course, I am preparing to make sure that we have delicious snacks on hand that are nutritious and like quick bites. So popsicles, healthy cookies, smoothie packs, coconut water, trail mix, all the yums. Now remember, my plan is to have a gentle home birth. But I realized that you have to be prepared just in case things don't go as planned, which does happen sometimes. So of course, I'm also preparing a hospital bag should, you know, the you know what hit the fan and we have to go to the worst case scenario. So we have that. Well, I need to pack that. We will have that. I'm going to pack that. <laughs> and then we'll be prepared because that'll Will also give me peace of mind of course like if things go awry we're prepared we can go to the hospital if need be now if you'd like more mental and spiritual preparation ideas I made a whole video that was largely dedicated to how I'm preparing for a home birth which was my pregnancy Q&A that I recently uploaded so I will link that because in that video I shared so many ideas and recommendations on how I was preparing for a home birth like I tried to be succinct but I certainly failed at that I just <laughs> there's a lot of information that I wanted to share to help mamas to make educated decisions and do research. So there's a lot of resources in that video and links that you can click on to do further research. So there you have it. The total rundown on how to prepare for a home birth and some ideas of what to have on hand. I truly hope that you found this video helpful and if you did, I'd be delighted if you would leave a comment and let me know. Very important, if there's something that you think I missed, please, 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 please leave me a comment down below and say, Anne, you really need this thing or Anne, you forgot this because in theory, there should be enough time for me to get those things. I'm gonna post this video pretty soon. So unless baby decides to show up early, I should be able to rally and and, and get those things if you think there's a glaring omission. So I am all ears. Also be sure to check out the Dutch Health Store. I just love the small and wonderful company neatly nestled in the Netherlands, making all our body care dreams come true. So say a prayer for me, guys. Birthing is nigh. And I'll see you next time on Veggie Betty TV. Bye.